Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over iterators in C++. So iterators are containers that function like pointers. You can think of them as wrappers for pointers. So they pretty much have almost the same functionalities. So there are different kinds of iterators. We have the output iterator, which is an iterator that can write to the memory address that it is pointing to. And we have an input iterator that just reads the memory address value. And we have these iterators over here, which I ordered by indentation. So we have the forward iterator, and this is an iterator that can only move forward. And this would be done with the plus plus increment operator. And basically, the reason why I ordered it like so is because a forward iterator is pretty much an iterator that can move forward and read and write. And we have bidirectional iterator, which is an iterator that can move forward and backwards using increment and decrement. So essentially, a bidirectional iterator is a forward iterator that can also move backwards. So that's why I indented this below forward iterator. And then we have random access iterator, which can move forward and backwards and jump to a specific point with addition or subtraction. So here we have a list of data structures. And so far in the series, I only covered vectors. So a vector would have a random access iterator, whereas a forward list, which is a singly linked list, would just have forward, meaning you can only iterate from left to right and not backwards. And then we have list, which is a doubly linked list, which is bidirectional. So unlike the vector, doubly linked list does not have random access. And that is because it is not implemented with an array like the vector is implemented as. And then we have set and map, which is bidirectional. So, so far in the C++ tutorial series, we've only covered vector. And in the next few videos, we'll cover set and map. And much later on, we'll cover forward list and list. So don't worry about linked lists if you don't know what they are. We will cover them later on. And the purpose of this video is to just introduce the concept of iterators. So we're going to talk about iterators specifically for vectors. And in later videos, we'll talk about iterators for sets and maps and the linked list. Oh, and the deck as well. All right, so let's say we have a vector of numbers here. Basically, with an iterator, we have a beginning and ending. So if you remember from my video on vectors, we covered the begin method, which returns an iterator. So I can do cout numbers.begin. And as I mentioned before, Iterators are pretty much wrappers for pointers. So if I were to print out a pointer, we would get the memory address that it is pointing to. But what happens if I try to print out an iterator? So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get an error. So we're not able to print out iterators like we can with pointers. So instead, what I'll do is I will dereference the iterator. So numbers.begin returns the iterator for the first element in numbers. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get five. So we can dereference and we can also do plus two. Let's test your knowledge. So what will this line print out? Let's run the program and you can see we get seven. So you might be thinking, why didn't this print out 65? And that is because of the order of operations. Numbers.begin will give us the iterator for the first element. And then we call the dereference operator, which gives us five, and then we add two. So if I want 65, we would have to do dereference parentheses numbers.begin plus two. So let's save and run a program. And now you can see we get 65. And we can assign iterators to variables. So the type would be vector int colon colon iterator. And let's just call this variable start and I'll assign it numbers.begin. So let's print out this value. So C out the reference start and nine. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get five. And I can also do the reference of start plus two. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get 65. And I can modify the iterator. So let's get rid of this line. And I can do start plus equal to. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get 65. So that's iterator. And if I make the vector constant like so, and I save and run a program, you can see we get an error here. So because this vector is constant, we want to use a const iterator. 
And for const iterator, we will use cbegin. So now start is a const iterator. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 65. So const iterator does not mean that the iterator cannot move. The iterator can move. As you can see, we do start plus equal to. But const iterator basically means that we cannot change the value at the memory address through this iterator. So that's const iterator. And let's just get rid of this. And let's make this iterator again. And here, let's just change it back to begin. And a lot of times with iterators, we generally don't bother typing all this out. Instead, we can just use the auto keyword. So for the reader, we can tell that this is an iterator because of the begin method for the vector. And like with begin, we can also have an end. So I can do auto end is equal to numbers dot end. And I can see out the reference of end. And let's see what happens if I save and run the program. And you can see we get negative one instead of 17. And the reason is because end does not refer to the last element. It refers to the part after the last element. And the reason why it's set up this way is because we can iterate through a vector from beginning to end. And we know when to stop when the iterator reaches end. So if I want the last element, I would do the reference of end minus one. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get 17. And if I do end minus five, and I save and run the program, you can see we get five, which is the first element in numbers. And of course, if this were a constant vector, then you would do C end, okay? So if I were to make this constant, this would be C begin and C end. All right, and for printing a vector using iterators, we would do auto IT. So IT is short for iterator. Sometimes you might see iter instead of IT. So here I'll just use IT or it. And let's assign this numbers.begin. And I would just do a while IT is not equal to numbers.end. See out the reference of IT. And don't forget, with the while loop, you need to increment. And here, let's just print out n line. So now, if I save and run the program, we get 5, 10, 65, 24, and 17. And with vectors, we have some methods that use iterators. For instance, we have numbers.insert. If I want to insert at the beginning, I would do numbers.begin. Let's insert 100. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get 100 inserted at the very beginning. All right, so we've covered some functionalities of iterators, such as accessing a value at an index of a vector or printing out the vector. But we can do all of this using pointers. So why do iterators exist then? Well, iterators can be generalized. So here, I can just take this piece of code and I can create another function that will be generic. So as I mentioned, we have these other data structures or containers that use iterators. And iterators are pretty much begin and end. And all these data structures have begin and end. So I can create a function that can be generalized for all of these data structures or containers. So let's create a generic function. So template type name t. And if you don't know what templates or generics are, I have a video on function templates and generics on my channel, and I'll also link it in the video description. So here, let's just create a function that will just print out the vector, print. And this can be any container, actually. So I'm going to pass by reference, const reference, and this will be type t. So this can be any container. It can be a vector or a list or a set. It can be any container of any type. So I'm going to do const reference of t container. And we'll take this piece of code and place it inside here. And I'm going to replace numbers with container. And here I can just call print numbers. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get our numbers here. And just to show you that the same function will work for other containers, I'm going to import or include set. And if you don't know what a set is, don't worry. I will cover the set in my next few videos. But basically, I can create a set of integers. And let's call this number set. And let's just copy the values. So a set is pretty much similar to a vector, except we need to make distinctions of two things. 
So let's start by just inserting a number into the set. So I'm going to do a number set dot insert 100. Now notice here, unlike with vectors, we're not asked to insert the number at a specific index. So if I print number set and I save and run the program, you can see 100 appears at the end of our set. And if I make this 10, let's save and run the program, 10 appears over here. So notice the numbers in our set are sorted. So specifically in C++, sets are sorted. So in C++, if you want an unsorted set, it would be called unordered set. And the second distinction is if I were to insert twice, so let's make it 100. And let's do the same here for vectors. And I save and run a program. You can see with the vectors, we insert 100 twice at the beginning, but with the set, we only insert it once. So the set in C++ sorts the values and ensures that the values are unique. So unlike a vector, a set is a unique collection. All right, so that's pretty much all I'm going to say for sets in C++, but the purpose is to just give you a preview on how using iterators can allow us to create functions that are generic that will work for different containers. And in the next few videos, I will cover more in detail on this container. So that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.